and decided to pop down to Afghanistan for a few days. Never been before, just goofing off and soaking in the sun. Seems more peaceful than London to me. AMA. Time sample, fuck off. I have more photos. Did a little trolling at the bird market this morning. Are you one of the 600 UK troops sent over to help evacuate your compatriots? I would be out by or before they are if I were you. I was originally predicting that Kabul would be surrendering within six months. I think it will be sooner than that at the pace things are progressing. Still no date. Fuck off. Dates on the form, retard. Zoom in and read. Tickets are non-refundable. Therefore, I either stay permanently in a grave, or I leave on the 19th as planned. Just the Afghanistan grind set. Just want to reiterate my confidence. The intelligence agencies show that the capital may be taken over within 30 days. However, not in a few days, I'm almost sure. If not, this red will get so much more interesting <laughs> and quirky. All the major areas were surrounded for a month, with suppliers cut off, and people were slowly convinced to surrender. The area that just fell had been under attack for 30 days, and everyone knew it was gone already. Kabul is huge, and the most defended area with now 600 UK troops. I'm sure the Taliban would rather cut losses on their side, waiting a few weeks for the Westerners to leave. Furthermore, the Taliban are anti-Western, but as long as you denounce the West, aren't Jewish or atheist, and can show you're a harmless tourist, you'll be just fine most of the time. Do you all really trust the Western media? Also, if I get proven wrong and die, edit in a laughing soundtrack over my posts. It'll be funny, I think. Kabul is huge, and the most defended area with now 600 UK troops. Is that from Operation Pitting? Aren't they trying to evacuate British nationals, though? Do you all really trust the Western media? Personally, I put a high degree of trust into the Big Booba Enquirer. They have never failed to live up to their name and always go above and beyond in providing evidence for their claims. Someone asked why I picked Afghanistan. Well, I just googled most dangerous countries to visit and used it as a shopping list. I went to Chernobyl two years ago as my first ever holiday abroad and bribed an armed guard to be allowed to take out a gas mask I found in the abandoned hospital, sold it on eBay, for more than the trip cost. This is pre-Chernobyl TV show. My room is nice. It's hidden off the street and barricaded with several steel doors and checkpoints with guards. I've got a 32-inch fat TV. I've got AC which works surprisingly well. Double bed and the mattress is rock hard, but apparently that's the custom here. I kind of like it. I've got a private bathroom and I get breakfast in the morning if I want at no charge. They also offer takeaways. Checked Uber Eats for shits and Googles and nothing. So I got some last night. Very good and cheap. People say my situation is bad, but us Westerners pay around £5 for a cancer-inducing fast food burger. But this whole meal costs less than £1. You have no idea how good it tasted. Get a taste of the good life, and come down to Afghanistan with me, lads. We can have a night on the town. Country in anarchy. I saw a few dead in a car crash. Military is fleeing, and only a few brave stay. Embassy is closed, so I walk to the airport and am safe. We'll find the British representatives and get a flight out. Got into my hotel, heading to Embassy. Covered myself in a burger so they couldn't tell I was a white guy. Embassy closed so I walked almost an hour to the airport. I took off the burger halfway and am wearing a headscarf. Trying to find the British ambassadors. I'm safe at the airport however. Short response for now, only essential talk. We'll update with time. Jesus has saved me, I hope. I will either die a man or leave with giant balls. <laughs> we can't find someone at the airport that knows what's going on or how to get out. There are no representatives here, I think. One said there is no more flights too. Will I have to wage guerrilla warfare across the Taliban until I reach another country? If the Taliban kidnap me, the plan is simple. I'm legally, technically a lord. Brought fake certificate, wore a suit in a bank, and talked the talk. So it says Lord on all my bank cards. The Taliban may see that as reason enough to keep me alive, thinking it may hold some negotiating power, as they'll think I'm important. Let's hope it won't get to that stage, though. How about you manage yourself some bitches? <laughs> I'm joking. You do good work. 
Good luck, lad. What does your family think about all this? 4chan just got dunked on by a guy fleeing Afghanistan in the middle of a Taliban siege. No more flights in Kabul. I'm stuck in Afghanistan. Bit of a pickle. Saw the Taliban enter the airport. They saw me, but kind of didn't care. I'm going back to the safe house now. Plan is to wait to see if any flights resume. I've met some of the forces. Great lads. Flights for RAF are cancelled tomorrow, but I'm working on it. Evac is likely. America took back the airport, but apparently it's been breached. I've been hearing gunshots for a while. Packed, just in case. I'll be given body armor. Emergency evacuation right now to a better place as all compounds are to be abandoned. I'm with the best of the best. Getting five people calling me at once. Sorry, I can't answer, but I'm fine. Got evacuated at 4-ish. It's 2am now, with a hundred or so other civilians. Couldn't message as there were cars emitting signals that would set off bombs. It blocked my AirPods from connecting, so I think it blocked all Wi-Fi and data. The Taliban let us go through the airport, and we met many of them. Very long transition period, but everyone was smiling and waving at one another. Some took selfies with them. I slept on a dirt gravel road and woke up as cars went by. We're in a new safe house and we're all hydrated, happy and ready for a few hours of sleep. I've been telling journalists this, but despite how interesting my situation is, please remember I am comfortable where, as the average Afghani is fearing for their lives. My tour guide is currently fearing for his family, and his only crime is going the extra mile and saving my life. I can never repay him, and that saddens me. I've heard about some kind people gathering money for my trip, but please put it to better use and donate to some charities in the area. A few dollars or pounds will make all the difference for a family. It's what I've been trying to do on this trip, but sadly it's never going to be enough and that pains me. I hope you're all well, guys. No internet, so I don't know if this will post, but I've got on a list for Dubai and may be flying within a few hours. On the flight out, we aren't allowed any liquids at all. No razors and only one bag up to 10 kilograms, so everyone is tossing all their belongings into a pile. People are donating each other their items because they can't carry them. Some lads stuff my body armor and bag with protein bars. There were 20 of them. Very happy man right now. Thank you, lads. I found a bottle of decent Canadian syrup in the disposal file. And down like a third of the bottle before being searched. Happy days. Full deeds of the man as adventure, which includes doxing and endangering the life of his interpreter and guide. Shut up, dork. Untrue, his location was never shared as he wasn't allowed into the safe house as he's Afghani. At the end of it, he called me a close friend. I never endangered him. He wanted his name known also. He told me it'd be safe in Kabul, but when it became unsafe, he looked after me. He thanks God just as much as I do. The happy ending. Landed in Dubai thanks to the brilliant people at the British Army. All safe. <laughs>